Yeah, we're back on the Sports Max Zone, and we are talking cricket. We're talking with the uh, operations manager of the Ghana Cricket Board, Anthony Dianrad. And just before the break, he started talking to us about some of the developments that they're pursuing coming into the 2024 season. Particularly interested, in, Anthony, in your under-23 league, because I think that has been a, a missing age group in, in Caribbean cricket. Uh, you know, we, the, we know we have under-15, under-17, and under-19 tournaments, but uh, key that just that transi transition from the junior level into the senior program what was the thinking behind the focusing on under 23s well what, what happened over the years what we find is that um we lose a lot of talent between the the under 19 and the senior when that when between that transition so we we wanted to have an age group where the players can stay a little longer into the, the cricket and focus on, on making um, a contribution still in cricket. Because a lot of times what you find is that after the under-19 level, the players will decide to maybe go have a full-time job and not focus on the, on the cricket. So we want to have this age group where they can actually stay a little longer, maybe a two or three years more, so they can focus on and on, on work hard on being able to perform at a level before they, they make that decision or that career changing decision. So yeah. it just gives them an added opportunity yes. to, as I say, stay in the system. Yeah, I take the point, that's a good point there because there's been a proliferation of Guyanese players now entering the international level with West Indies cricket. But uh, in the past few years, there would have been players between 20 and 24 um, that are, are fringe players and um, high quality players but because of the competitiveness of their particular form in 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 the game may not really get into the west indies first 11 immediately you know players like ashmead ned and um well kevin sinclair and so on are obviously quality players in their their young 20s and um are coming out of a system that is is trying to prepare them the gcb is for the higher level yeah and ju just to add to that um Quite a few players that we've we've had as an emerging contracted player. Now, the GCB, in addition to the 15 contracted franchise contracted players, we contract 13 what we call emerging players that are on the 23. So recently, in the in the 15, in this recent 15 um, GHE contracted players, six of last year's um, 13 emerging players have graduated to the the GHE franchise. So that is something that, that, that we have also placed emphasis on. And I, I didn't mention that um, when I reviewed the 2023, but the, the advent or the, the addition of having contracted players that are outside of the, the 15 GHE contracted or franchise contracted mm -hmm. system. So it gives us a wider pool to choose from. And we're seeing dividends here with, with Shamar. Shamar Joseph is a perfect example. He was one of the, the emerging players last year. And he is now um, being contracted, fully contracted, as well as, as we all know, he's in Australia with the, with the test team. Yeah, and making quick strides. He's almost been fast Definitely right, but not. because of how well he did on the A tour and so on, um, we understand the, the quick moves that he has made. Um, I want to speak quickly about GCB's relationship with the media in Guyana, um, Anthony, because um, the, the fact is that uh, cricket needs needs promotion for you know a society to embrace the sport that certainly means or meant a lot more to the average caribbean cricket fan 40 years ago than than it is than than it means now um having said that i don't follow the electronic media in ghana that often but the newspapers the ghana chronicle starbrook news uh, ghana times ghana newsroom kaiter news every time you look at the sports pages you see cricket stories and um the, the high volume of different competitions um, in, in, in Guyana. And I suspect that that is a part of uh, the growth of the sport in Guyana, where the media has the buy-in and are playing their role in, in promoting and uh, making sure that the, the readers of these newspapers and the viewers on television um, are constantly kept abreast with what, what's happening in the game. 
Yeah, definitely. Obviously, the media is very important in, in getting the information out there. If the, if the media is not existing, how would um, the avid fan know what's going on? So it's very important that we, we utilize the media. And we have, we have been doing, doing that for the past um, few years. In addition to our, um, the, the print, we also have a very active um, Facebook page where all the information that we send to the media is, is, is also shared on, on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So in this interaction that we are having here, um, Anthony, um, while a lot of cricket fans in the Caribbean are worried about the popularity of the sport and the growth of the sport, there, there is a feeling from a distance looking on that, that Guyana's cricket is, is flourishing. I think that, that's definitely the case, especially with us winning the CPL and with us being able to win six of the last eight or nine four-day championship tournaments. Um, in addition, at the junior level, we won quite a few at the under-19 level. We've never won at the under-17 level. So winning is very important in, in, in keeping the fans um, interested, if you want to put it that way. So that is what I, I, I think that is the contribution. If, we, if, we, if we're not doing something good, then, then it means no one would, would be interested. Yeah, and you, uh, the, the future of a country's cricket is, it, is quite often judged by what you do in your youth program. And as you've just referenced, Ghana, usually pretty strong in, in youth cricket. I see in your under 15 cricket, there's there's an Adrian Hetmeyer, the nephew of Shimron Hetmeyer, who scored two double centuries in under-15 cricket in Ghana in, in recent months. Um, the last one, a record score, 277, I think he made. And there was a headline in one of the newspapers that suggested that he appears to be unstoppable, young Adrian Hetmeyer. Um, as I said, nephew of Shimron. How, how good is this young man? I haven't seen him, so I have to depend on you to give me a rating. Yeah, he's, he's very, very talented. He's one that um, we should look out for. Obviously, with, with those scores, you, do, you don't find players scoring that amount of runs, especially consecutively, two double century and, a, and what, what, what they call a daddy, a daddy century of 167, I think it was, in consecutive. And it is something probably unheard of. Why, why is it called memory. a daddy century in Guyana? <laughs> <laughs> a big century. Oh, big century. Oh. <laughs> okay. And how so old is more, he? More, more than 150 would be a daddy <laughs> century. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's 14, man. 14, what? I think. Yeah. 14 years. And he represented um, Guyana at the under 15 level last year as well. He didn't have um, a, a successful regional tournament, but we, we're expecting him to have a very successful tournament this year, seeing that this will be his second year. And we, he'll be a lot more experienced. So definitely, he's one to look out for in the future. Can you talk to me quickly about your assessment of West Indies cricket at the moment and the part that Guyana can play in fortifying this uh, rebuilding West Indies unit, not only T20, but ODIs and Test as well? I think if, if you review last year's um, performance by the West Indies team, although we did not make the, the 50 overs um, World Cup, in the, the, the three, we, won, we managed to win three to win the series, we managed to win the series against England. So I think that is a step in the right direction. Um, and it's important that that we we take it um, take it in stride. And going into 2024, the franchises, each franchise in the Caribbean, we have an important part to play. Not just Guyana, it's, it's all the franchises and all um, cricketing nations in the Caribbean as a part to play in, in the rebuilding of the West Indies. And it's, it's very important that, that we play, each of us play our part. Yeah, and as we look ahead to the T20 World Cup, there are some Guyanese players who are being looked at as possible key players in this West Indies setup. Uh, none other than um, Romario Shepard among them, um, both with bat and, bat and ball. I'm pretty certain that the Guyanese will be pretty proud of, of, of his growth in recent years. Yes, definitely. I think Shepard has, uh, has come a long way um, in 2023. He had a, a fantastic year, and um, we're expecting... We're expecting him to be a part of um, of that setup, hopefully. Uh, I don't want to put myself in the selector's seat or give the selectors anything to think about. They, but, uh, they, they, they often get fired, hoping, actually, so you, you, don't want to, you don't want to be there. Go we ahead. Are hoping, yes. We are hoping that we'll get um, good representation at the, at the World Cup. 
Yeah, and um, yeah. Sheriff Ian Rutherford is a, a hard-hitting player. Um, bowls a bit. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Coach Darren Sammy and uh, the, the captain, Rob Paul will consider giving him uh, a, a few more overs. But um, he's a player that has been around for a, a few years and having an opportunity now in 2024 to make it even bigger if he can grab his opportunities with both hands. Yeah, definitely. I think yeah, um, after a few years of being out in the wilderness, um, he's returned to the setup and hopefully he can um, he can maintain his place and, and secure his place um, as a permanent member of the West Indies team in the near future. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Anthony, great talking to you. Um, uh, we are very um, impressed by what the Guyanese have been doing with their cricket in recent years. And I, 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 I so much like some of your, your young cricketers uh, in the office here. The guys will tell you that I have a lot of time for Gurukesh Moti. And I think um, he has a bright future ahead of him. And he's just one of the Guyanese uh, that we think um, you're, are on the cusp of uh, making big names for themselves in West Indies cricket and international cricket. So um, yeah. congrats again and keep up the good work. Um, from the Sports Mat Zone, you can tell your GCB team. Um, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, Anthony Dan right there. He's the operations manager at the Guyana Cricket Board talking about uh, the success that the Guyanese cricketers have been having in recent years. We go to break. Still a lot more to come on the Sports Mat Zone.